Superintendent Kopp. Uh, I wanted to film a short video today talking to you about uh, some back to school options and some questions that we're going to ask and also give you some information that's going to help inform your decision uh, when you as parents decide what you're going to do with your children for this fall. Right now what our plans are is we are going to give parents a choice and that choice is uh, do you want your child to have virtual learning where uh, they're going to stay at home or do you want to send your child back to school? And we've been surveying uh, parents across the district and we've uh, received uh, some great responses. Uh, right now what those responses are is about 54% of our parents have stated that they would prefer face-to-face -face instruction and about 46% uh, would prefer virtual. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to ask you to make this choice and to give you the best possible information that will inform your decision. Uh, I wanted to talk to you just about a few things. First of all, uh, when you're considering virtual instruction, I don't want you to, con to confuse that with NTI. They are two very separate, different things. NTI, non-traditional instruction, which we used back in the spring, uh, is, has always been meant to um, simply be for short-term fixes. NTI is meant to um, have content review, not teaching new content. Uh, it is meant for short-term closures like with snow or if there's a, a flu uh, situation, something along those lines. When the pandemic started in the spring, it was what we had to do as a district because again, no one saw what was, uh, what was coming across the state and across the country with this terrible pandemic. So that's what NTI really is meant to do. Virtual instruction is very different. And what I wanna stress on virtual instruction is virtual instruction is really meant to look as close to normal face-to-face -face instruction as possible. We're trying to be very innovative with how we're going to present uh, options for virtual instruction and what that could look like. You know, virtual instruction is going to be new content. Uh, it's, it's going to be, um, you know, attendance in, in terms of virtual instruction is the students are going to be at home, but our faculty and staff are going to be pre presenting and preparing, uh, preparing and presenting that information, information, excuse me, uh, in a way that simulates what students would get in a face-to-face -face environment. What could that look like? Well, for, for one example, uh, we could have uh, a number of students that are receiving face-to-face -face instruction uh, during, uh, at a particular time of the day, and our teacher could take their Chromebook and turn the camera on, go to Google Meet, and start a virtual meeting that virtual students could go ahead and sign on to. And then they're presenting, the teachers are presenting the information to the class and students at home are getting that same information. That's one possibility. It could also be pre-recorded um, lessons. Um, what, what we're trying to do here is really think outside of the box and make our virtual instruction as innovative and as close to normal instruction as possible. We understand that it's never going to be exactly the same, but it's very, very different from what NTI is. So as you're considering, um, you know, should I send my child back or do I have uh, concerns enough that I want to keep them home? understand that we're trying to do something very different with virtual instruction. It will not be NTI. Now, what will in-person instruction look like? It's important for me to make a, a couple of points here. The first, the first thing is, is our students are going to be required to have one of these, a mask, and they're going to be required to wear that mask when they're in common areas or when social distancing isn't possible. And we did see some comments that came back on our survey that, you know, my child is not going to wear a mask. Uh, we understand that and uh, that's why we're, we're being very flexible with parents giving them an option uh, of uh, virtual instruction or face-to-face. -face. However, we are going to abide by the guidelines that have been given to us by the governor, the health department, the CDC, that is, those guidelines state very clearly that we need to have children with masks. If your child does not have a mask, we can make one available for your child. And the thing I want you to understand is children are not going to be required to wear their masks all throughout the course of the day. It is very simply when they're moving, they're masking. That's, that's the phrase that we're using. If you move, you mask. So when they're uh, moving through common areas or if they are in a situation where social distancing isn't possible, we're going to work to set up our classrooms where there is at least six feet of di distance between our students. 
So in that case, when the student goes into the classroom, as long as they are socially distant, they can remove the mask. And um, honestly, for the vast majority of the day, I would think that our students would not have to have the mask actually on. It's just when social distancing wouldn't be possible or when they have to move, um, then, then that would be, uh, that would be uh, when, when they would have to put the mask on. Another item to keep in mind in terms of when uh, students are going to be required to wear masks, I need to be very specific here because the guidelines state that students grade one and up are going to be required to wear masks when social uh, distancing is not possible or when moving in, in common areas. So uh, just so all parents know, that means that kindergarten students and lower, as well as preschool, they would not be required to wear a mask, uh, a mask according to the guidelines. So I uh, just wanted to make sure that we specify that point. So I understand that all of these things are, are difficult. There's no perfect solution here. Uh, I appreciate all of the comments that we received from, uh, from the staff, from our families, uh, all of our parents, and, and we're taking those things very seriously as we try to come up with solutions. Uh, what are, just give a brief overview of what those options again are and where we could be. Option number one that we're considering is having, again, parents make that choice between virtual and face-to-face -face instruction. If the numbers somewhat resemble what the survey information has stated, then we should be able to do face-to-face -face instruction Monday through Friday because, again, that would be about half of our students that would be back and we would be able to socially distance those. That's option one. If the numbers come back, though, and more people choose face-to-face -face versus uh, virtual and it gets to a point where we couldn't safely uh, accommodate that many students at one time, then we would have to look at a hybrid model. Uh, again, students, uh, parents would make a choice. Those that want to keep their children home for virtual, we can do that. And then the second choice then would be for the students coming back, we would look at some hybrid model where students would come to school two times per week and be on virtual three days per week. So that's option two. Option three is 100% virtual. And that is something that we still have to keep in mind if our uh, cases uh, have, a, have a spike. If we get to a point where we just don't feel safe, that we can safely instruct our students in a face-to-face -face manner. That's something that the Board of Education is going to have to keep in mind. Uh, so we greatly appreciate all of your, your input. Um, we're going to put some information on this video that uh, my email address, where if you have any questions, you can email me. Uh, the survey that you're going to get in terms of making this choice is going to be sent out on Friday. Uh, that's tomorrow, uh, as I'm, I'm filming this on Thursday. So you're gonna get this survey on Friday. You're going to have a full week until next Friday to uh, make that choice, uh, whether you choose to do virtual or in person. And we really would like you to make that choice over this week if possible, uh, once we again give you as much information as you possibly can in making that decision. That's gonna allow us to determine, do we present to the board for a, a potential meeting on July 20th, which is Monday, July 20th, um, so the survey would be open until Friday the 17th. Do we, um, do we propose option one? Do we propose option two? Or would we consider at that point option three if there's been a, a large spike in the number of cases? Uh, understand that we're doing everything we can uh, during this very difficult time uh, to meet our students' needs. And this is a very difficult time for all of us. And we sure appreciate your flexibility and your input. And if you have any questions, again, my email is on here. You can shoot me an email. Thank you again, and uh, I look forward to seeing our kids back safely as soon as we can. Thank you.